and welcome to this week's design challenge by Garsington Opera, Sharp Ears, Cunning Mask. And we will be looking at the opera, The Cunning Little Vixen by Janacek. Now there are many animals in this piece and the protagonist is a vixen, a female fox, and we follow her journey and she's very sort of willful and independent, just really cut our teeth into. And this week the resources that you're going to need are a newspaper, some tape, ideally masking tape, a stapler, some scissors, paint in the colours red, yellow, orange and black, a paintbrush, the bigger the better, and some prick sticks. So grab those resources and we are up for a really exciting day because in this story, this opera, there are many, many animals. And I'm gonna show you a couple now from Garsington Opera's production. So this one is a badger <laughs> on its knees and a woodpecker back there and etc. And then this next picture, you can see the vixen herself standing on a table with the chickens in the coop behind her. Look at those fantastic costumes. Utterly brilliant, they should inspire us this morning. There's also a cricket, a grasshopper, a frog, a mosquito, a blue dragonfly to name but a few. So I hand this very difficult challenge the Rianne morning because we've got humans singing on stage and they all need to play lots of different animals and how are we going to do that Rhiannon? Oh well, you picked the right girl today for this challenge Karen because I love designing costumes for humans as animals it's one of my favorite things to do. What I particularly love and what I try and do is I look at reference pictures of the animals and I try and work out what their characteristics are. So maybe the shape of their ears, the colour of their fur or feathers, any distinctive silhouettes or shapes. And I've got an example here of a costume drawing that I did which is a bird. So here you can see I try to find those really distinct characteristics of its black feathers um, which are kind of coming down from the arms there. A little suggestion of the beak with this kind of neckerchief and we use these really great kind of low slung harem pants that gave this sense of the tail. And the next photo we can show you is this costume in action. So this is at Garsington. So that is then the real costume and the performer up there who was flying through the air on a harness. So I think uh, this is one of my favorite things. I'm really excited to do this with you guys today. As Karen has said, this opera, and as the title suggests, is about a vixen who's a female fox. And there is also uh, a gentleman fox and then her fox cubs. Now, I just love this. Look at that gorgeous, rich orange color. It's so lovely. And it really makes you think of a fox. There's no doubt in my mind that that is those characters are foxes, which I absolutely love. And so this designer has really concentrated on the textures of velvet and fur and the color to let the audience know that these are foxes on stage. So what we're going to do today is we're going to create our own fox mask, like a sort of headdress. And I'm going to show you here a little example. And would you believe it? This is just made from newspaper. We're gonna have great fun. I'm gonna just put it on my head so we might need to see the other camera view. So there we go. This is uh, what we're gonna to make today. And that is perfect, Rhiannon, because obviously uh, these characters are singing because it's an opera, which is a song story. And I noticed that in this design, you've left the mouth and the eyes free and also the ears, so being able to hear when you're on stage is also super important, but it still really, really does look like that fox. So I'm excited to see how we're gonna make this. Great, right, let's get going. So in front of me here, I've got three sheets of newspaper. Um, this is a broad sheet that I've cut in half. So some, you can use like a, a, a smaller newspaper, but use it that, that way up, or a bigger paper and cut it in half. Hope that makes sense. So, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to fold this over like this, all the way. So this is about an inch uh, wide. So we're going to fold it all the way. And then when you get to the edge, 
I'm going to take some of my masking tape and I'm just going to tape that so it doesn't unroll. Here we go. Now, there's my first one. I'm going to do that again. Same deal. We're going to go roll it up like that. But this is going to give us really strong uh, bands which we can start to make some structure with around our head. So there's number two and the last one, same deal. You're becoming an expert at this now. Here we go. Just fold it and press it down as you go. And then on this last one with my masking tape, I'm gonna just take that so it doesn't unroll. Great, so here we go. So we're gonna take one of these uh, rolled up bits of newspaper and we're gonna put it around our head. In fact, I'm gonna do it that way so you can see the front. Now, my head's quite big. I like to think it's full of brains, but that means that this piece of newspaper basically needs to be attached together pretty near the end like like that so yours might overlap a bit more uh you just need to fit it around your head so you can use your stapler at this point which makes it really quick and easy so you can use a stapler to do that so you've now got this uh attached together or you can use your tape and just tape that join right we're going to pop that down we're going to take our next bit of uh rolled up paper and if you can just attach it anywhere on your headband, like that. So we want that, that's the next thing we wanna do. Now, I'm gonna put this on back to front like this. So that bit sticking up the top at the back, and you're gonna pull it over your head, down to the middle of your forehead. And you just hold it tight there, like that. And then you're going to Either you can staple that, I'm trying to get it so you can see it, you can staple it, or I'll show you here, I can just tape that down so that's nice and secure, like that. Now, we've got a little bit of excess there, we don't need this bit, so we can just chop that off, and to make sure that's nice and secure, I'm going to just put another bit of tape on. So here we go, this is what we have. Now, that should fit nice and snugly on your head, just above your ears, so it's nice and tight, and that is the beginning of our mask. Now, you're gonna take this little offcut that you just uh, made when you made that snip, and with this band going across this way in front of you, we're gonna fold this little piece in half and we're going to attach it on to the front here like that so this is the beginnings of the nose of our fox so it doesn't have to be uh, pointy it can have a little bit of a sort of snout but the important thing is is that this is going in this direction in relation to your snout because uh, it will give us a bit of structure to work with so you can stick that on like that. You might want to adjust it a little bit to get the, the sort of shape right. But if you just go with your tape or your stapler, if you have a staple, stapler and plenty of staples, there we go. So hopefully you're with me there. So that is our little sort of nose shape. Now we're going to take our final, uh, rolled up bit of uh, newspaper and we're going to attach it to the top to the center top and then we're going to we're going to stick it so it comes down to the front of the nose so first of all if you staple or tape it to the center top there so that is going to be right on the top of your head and then you if you want to just cut it off a little bit so you've not got all that excess and then what you want to do is you want to attach it down here. So this is like the forehead. And then you want to sort of fold it in 
at the front so that, that you can then stick that onto the nose like that. So I will just do that. So I'm going to stick it down at the front. I hope this is nice and clear. And then we're just going to pull it down there. And on the inside, hopefully you can see that, on the inside there, I'm just going to hold it in place with a little bit of tape. So here is our basic shape for our fox headdress. I pop it on my head like that. Hopefully you can see it. here we've got a lovely nose shape and the forehead is pretty much following the shape of your, the top of your head. Okay, I'm just going to pop that to one side. Now, we've got to make some ears. So here's another piece of newspaper. Now, we're going to fold this one, but this time I want it twice as wide. If that was the width of it last time, I want it twice as wide. And you should be able to fold it a couple of times over like that out of one, one piece of newspaper. Now, we are going to then cut that in half. That's for one ear. This is for one ear. So I'm going to draw myself an ear shape. Now, Fox's ears, this is one of the things as a designer that's really good to look at, is, would be to look at pictures of foxes because their ears are quite short and they also pitch forwards a little bit. So I'm not drawing a really big ear. I'm going to draw a little ear like that. And then I'm going to cut, cut that out. So it should just have a few layers. That's what will happen. You'll get a few different layers. Now, I'm going to do a cut up the middle at the bottom of the ear like that. So we've got two little flaps. And then I'm going to fold one on top of the other. So it gives it a kind of three-dimensional shape. I hope you can see that nice and clearly if I hold that up to the camera. So I've, I've done a cut up the middle there almost I mean if you can fold it in half if that's helpful and then just do a little snip up that fold and then cross those over like that and if you take them together then it will hold this lovely ear shape just like that with a bit of kind of 3d so then we can take our uh, mask that is uh, developing here and we can attach now our little fox ear onto that uh, crossover bit that goes to the top of, over the top of your head. So there's one ear. Now I'll just take you through that again, nice and simple. So we're going to do a, a fox shaped ear again. You could trace, for example, look, there's the bit I just cut from the other one. So you could use that to trace the same shape. And then don't forget, we're gonna cut that little um, slit there. So here we are, we're gonna cut this out. And then we will have the basis of our mask. There we go, there's our ear. I'll just give it a little fold up the middle there. I'm going to just take that on and then we can tape them on here. Now we can have a fiddle around with these once they're attached to get the, the angle right because they do, foxes do sort of pitch forwards a little bit. So we can, um, we can have a play around with that once we uh, have got them in place. So there we go. There is the very beginnings of our fox mask. So now what we've got to do is we've got to give him some fur because at the moment he looks a bit like a skeleton. So I'm going to put this to one side and we are going to have some fun now. We are going to paint this piece of newspaper. So here we go. Here is where your brush 
is going to come in very handy. Now, I would recommend using some kind of brush that is like a household brush rather than a really fine little paintbrush because this is quite a big bit of newspaper and if you do it with a tiny paintbrush, it can take you quite a long time. So I would suggest a slightly wider brush like, like this one. So here we go. Here on my bit of tin foil, which is my palette, I've got some red paint and some kind of ochre colour, but you might have yellow or you might have orange and you can use red, yellow, orange, brown to make a lovely, rich, foxy orange colour. So for me, I'm just going to mix together the red and that ochre colour. Now, you'll notice I'm not using any water. There's a really good reason for this. The newspaper I don't know if this has ever happened at home for you. If the newspaper gets really wet and soggy, it will disintegrate because it's not a very uh, heavy, thick paper. So my brush is dry. I hope you can see that there. My brush is dry and the paint is just straight out of the tube. And that means that we can brush it on like this in nice, big brush strokes and it won't make the paper too soggy. Now, what I love about this is just keeping it really dry also means that we get lovely streaks. I hope you can see that on, on the camera. And that's kind of like fur. It has a kind of furry quality, um, that kind of streaky, strandy quality. So I'm also, really enjoying some patches that are a bit more yellow, some patches are a little bit more red. There's a kind of red streak in here. Um, so I love that kind of difference in colour because then when we come to put, uh, use this as the fur, uh, we'll get lovely different textures and different colours in our animal fur. So I hope you get the gist. I would then fill up the whole of that um, piece of newspaper go to right to the edges if you can but don't worry about being able to see the newspaper through I think this is a lovely texture to use so I'm going to put that one to one side because here's one I made earlier so the good thing also about it being dry a dry paintbrush and, and paint straight out of the tube is that it dries really quickly, which is lovely because it means we can just get straight on with it. You might just want to go and have a quick drink or a quick cup of tea and let it dry enough so that the next thing we can do, which is really fun, is we are going to rip the paper into little, not too little, but into pieces. Here we go. Hopefully you can see those here. Um, so these are going to be our kind of individual bits of fur which we're then going to layer up on our mask. So you want sort of quite decent sized pieces because otherwise it will be really fiddly and small. So they're just, and don't worry about what shape they are, don't worry about the ripped edges, that all gives it a really lovely texture for us to work with. So I have, as you can imagine, I have done a pile of these already. So I'm going to just put that to one side. And I'm going to get back my newspaper mask headdress. And now I'm going to reach for my Pritzit, which has got a little bit of paint on it. And then this bit, I'm going to start with a few biggish bits and I'm going to put Pritt stick on the back, so not on the red side. And then I'm going to start to put fur onto my mask. So this process can take you a little bit of time. And you can just layer it up one bit at a time. And don't worry if you've got gaps, because as you put more pieces on, you'll be able, you'll end up with more structure and more pieces to stick to. So you can just keep going like this and um, build it up and build it up just as I'm doing, just take little bits at a time. What I quite like the effect of is if you work 
from the middle, the sort of nose, and work outwards like that, like the fur grows sort of that way on a fox's face, then you'll get kind of nice uh, texture and lines from the edge of the newspaper. So I'm going to keep going with this for a second. And uh, I think Karen's reappeared. I have, just because I was thinking that this is so relevant at the moment during when lots of us during lockdown, uh, there's, there's very few people out and about and nature has taken over in a way that we've never seen before. And people are reporting stories of different animals being in their gardens and on the streets and in unusual places. And I kind of, this pic you can see of this fox in a train station where there'd normally be hundreds of people. And it's just having a little walk up the steps there. Love it. If you spot any animals in your gardens, um, especially foxes, as this is the theme for this week. How's the sticking going? Pretty good. So you can see, you can see that I'm just building it up, building it up bit by bit. And don't worry if you've got little bits that are uh, flicking out like this. Don't worry about little ends because you can always just keep uh, sticking and building it up bit by bit. Now you may want to pause the video and then you could spend a little bit more time uh, building all of this front part of your mask up. Uh, just the same technique, keep going with it. I'm going to swap to one that I was working on earlier. So here you can see I have um, sort of filled in all of that front section. Um, so you can see here I've not left any holes for eyes or anything because this mask is a sort of half mask, almost like a hat really, or a headdress. So I don't need eye holes up here to see through. So we can just cover the whole thing. So what I'm going to show you now is just the last few finishing touches. So what I thought worked really well, when I looked at the photographs of a fox, their ears have got really wispy little little bits uh, flicking up. So I thought it was quite nice to add some little extra bits on the back of the ears just to give the ears a really lovely uh, furry little trim. So I basically, I'm sticking them on the back so that you can see the paint on the front. So that just gives the ears a little bit of an extra um, bit of extra layers and a bit of extra uh, detail so you could stick those on like like that around the ears and then finally once you're really happy with all of your um, fur that you've put on and you could keep going all the way around the back you could add in a little bit more um, of your folded up paper to give you another uh, little bit of structure at the back here so you could complete the back if you want but once you're really happy with the front uh, you can then get your paintbrush again and now we're going to go for some black paint I've got a little bit here on my on my uh, tin foil palette and you can add in some black onto the inside of these ears. Now again, I hope you can see, I'm sort of working from the middle and working outwards because then the brush strokes of your paint really help give that sense of uh, strands of fur and give the ears a little bit of definition right in the middle there, a little bit of darkness. So hopefully you can see that nice and clearly. So again, with the dry brush, don't, uh, if you have washed your brush off, then just um, dry it on some kitchen paper or even on some newspaper. Just take off the excess um, water uh, so that you can get this nice dry brush effect so that you can see, hopefully you can see there, a sort of feathery, furry effect. Now, here is the final touch. We're going to just with the same dry paint, we're gonna just touch in a little black nose like that. And all of a sudden, I think this really comes to life as a fox. 
Now, I've done this one quite quickly for you, but I'll just come back to this one, which I did before with just a little bit more time. And I hope you agree that it has a real kind of characterful quality to it. And then you can pop it on your head and laugh about as though you are a cunning little fox. What a fantastic vixen half mask there, Rihanna. Now, I really want men want to play the character of the vixen. Get designing, get creative this weekend. Don't forget to tag your designs. And if you're at school, challenge your teachers. Who can make the best half mask? Thank you so much, Rhiannon. We're really, really looking forward to seeing you live Monday Motivation, where we can show your fantastic designs. Bye.